Hi, this is Oak Barrett with the Green Plum product management team. Today we're going to be going through a demo of the latest GP Restore feature, Resize Cluster. What is the Resize Cluster option in GP Restore? Well, we introduced this in version 1.26.0 of GP Backup and GP Restore, and it enables customers to back up a database with a larger number of segments and restore it to a database with fewer number of segments. There needs to be a middle tier of storage in between these two clusters that's accessible by both Greenplum clusters. Data domain, Cloudian, S3, NFS, etc. are all supported. The cool thing is we could also do the opposite. We could take a GP backup of a cluster with a smaller number of segments to that same shared storage and now restore to a Greenplum cluster with a larger number of segments. This has been a customer request for a long time and we're super excited to be able to deliver it in our version 1.26 release. This demo will use four distinct Green Plum clusters, a 64 segment, a 24 segment, a 12 segment, and an eight segment cluster. We will be backing up and restoring from three distinct storage locations, Cloudy and Hyperstore, Dell Data Domain, and AWS S3. We will run through the following seven scenarios using different size Green Plum clusters, as well as different storage locations. Our first backup will be a 24 segment Green Plum to Cloudy and Hyperstore. All right, let's take a look at our 24 segment Green Plum cluster. As you can see, we have our primary, as well as six segments on four distinct hosts for a total of 24 segments. Now, if we log into our database, uh, we have 30 tables. We're going to key in on the employee summary table with a total row count of 1,720,543 distributed across those 24 segments. This is important for our last demo. Okay, let's take our GP backup of this 24 segment cluster and we're going to place the backup set on Cloudian. All right, we're backing up our 30 tables. We're gonna speed through this a little quicker here, so we'll speed it up. All right, as you can see, our data backup is complete. All right, with the backup complete, let's log in to Cloudian and take a look at the files that we have there. So if we go into the resize cluster test, our backup directory, and find our backup set based on date stamp, timestamp. As you can see, there's going to be a ton of data files in here. 24 segments, 30 tables, that's 720 data files, as well as the five metadata files that you see at the top of the screen. Okay, our first restore. We're going to take the backup set that sits on Cloudian of the 24 segment cluster and restore it to a 48 segment cluster. Let's take a quick look of our 48 segment host. All right, we have our primary, and you can see six segments each on eight distinct hosts for a total of 48 segments. All right, let's grab a timestamp from the first backup, and we'll build our GP restore command. The key here is going to be using the dash dash resize cluster option. We'll kick off our restore. This warning message is just a warning since this backup set was not taken on this cluster. Uh, it's a brief warning that's expected. We get into our pre data and data restore. Let's fast forward through this, and we have a successful GP restore. Okay, let's log into our database. Uh, we'll do a count of the employee summary table, uh, 1,720,543. Let's see if that matches our 24 segment cluster. And it does. Okay, for restore number two, we're gonna take that same 24 segment backup set on Cloudian, but this time restore to a smaller cluster of 12 segments. All right, let's take a look at our 12 segment cluster. There's our primary. As you can see, six segments per host, two hosts for a total of 12 segments. We'll go over, I'm gonna copy and paste that same exact GP restore command, since we're restoring from the same exact config file, same exact location. Kick off the restore, there's the expected warning. Again, we're using the resize cluster option here. Our restore is complete. All right, let's log into our database. We'll see that we have our 30 tables. We'll see that the employee summary table has 1,720,543 records. Let's check that against our original cluster, 24 segment cluster. 
and the row counts match. All right, we're going to take our second backup now. It's going to be of the 12 segment cluster we just loaded into. This time the backup set will go to Dell Data Domain using our ddboost plugin for GP backup. We'll start building our GP backup command. Uh, following the best practices for our ddboost plugin, we'll use single data file and no compression. When backup is running. We'll fast forward through this to speed it up. All right, we've got a successful backup. I'm going to move over to a Greenplum 5 cluster that I have stood up and use the deprecated GPDD boost utility to verify the data files on my data domain. I should see 12 uncompressed data files, 12 table of contents files, and finally the five metadata files. Okay, our third restore. I'm going to take the data set on the data domain of the 12 segment cluster and restore it to an eight segment single node edition Greenplum. Let's take a look at this single node edition. As you can see, our primary and eight data segments are all on the same host. I'm going to grab the timestamp from the previous backup so we can build our GP restore command, again, using the resize cluster option. All right, let's fast forward through this restore. We'll then log into our database. We'll take a look at our 30 tables, and then we'll key in on the employee summary, which will have 1,720,543 records. We'll compare that to our original 24 segment system, and the record count matches. Third and final backup. We're going to back up the eight segment single node edition Greenplum cluster to Amazon S3 using the GP backup S3 plugin. Let's build our GP backup command using our GP backup S3 plugin in our plugin config file pointing to the S3 bucket that we want to back up to. We'll kick off our backup and we'll fast forward through this so we don't have to watch the entire backup. All right, with a successful backup, we're going to look at our AWS console. We're going to log into the bucket that contains our backup set. Single node addition, eight node. 8 times 30, we should be at 240 data files. They should be compressed since we didn't specify the no compression option. As you can see, we have 245 objects in this bucket, so 240 data files, and we'll have our five metadata files as expected. All right, this is going to be our final restore of the demo. We're going to take our backup of the eight segment single node addition to S3. And we're going to restore that to our original 24 segment cluster that we began this demo with. All right, we're going to build our restore command. I'm going to redirect it to a new database because I don't want to overwrite the existing original database. So we'll call that HREDW2. We'll use our plugin config, same S3 that we just backed up to, and again, the resize cluster option. As the restore finishes, we'll log in and do some row counts. What I want you to notice on the next screen is the upper portion of the terminal is our original 24 segment uh, distribution count and row count for the employee summary. As we log into HREDW2, we're going to do a, there's our 30 tables. We're going to do a row count for employee summary. And that's going to give us our 1,720,543 records. But more importantly, let's take a look at the data distribution for this backup set. So if you look at the output of the upper and lower terminals, you'll see that the data distribution for the employee summary table is the exact same. The original database, HREDW up top, to the latest database, HREDW2 down below. Recall the top database was our first database that we backed up, 24 segment to Cloudian. We restored to a 12 segment system. We backed that up to data domain. We then restored to an eight segment single node. And we back that up to Amazon S3 and ultimately restored back to the original 24 segment cluster into a new database to compare record counts and they match. All right, we're gonna take a look at a couple of things behind the scenes of what enables the resize cluster option. This is gonna include stuff that goes on in the GP backup config file, our data file restore, and some of the logic inside resize cluster.
We're going to move over to the backup directory on the coordinator. Um, even in plugin-based backups, GP Backup will leave the five metadata files on the coordinator. Uh, we're going to open up the config file. I'm going to take a look here. This is a file generated by GP Backup. It has a lot of the meta metadata about the backup, including versions, include exclude filters, tables, etc. The new field that GP Backup leaves in this file is called segment count. And this is what enables the resize cluster on the GP Restore, and thus the need to take a backup with version 1.26 or later. Right, now that GP Restore knows how many segments that the backup set was taken from, we could devise a plan of how to load those data files into the new cluster, whether it's going from a larger cluster to a smaller cluster, as shown in the diagram to the left, or from a smaller cluster to a larger cluster, GP Restore will load those data files using copy onto those segments. The important point to note here is that data might not ultimately live on that particular segment based on the distribution key and algorithm of the Greenfin server. Thus, there's still another step to land that data in the appropriate spot. This is just the initial data load to get these data files into Greenplum. All right, so we have the data in the database. What's next? Uh, let's open up the PG log. Uh, we'll switch into master data directory, open up the PG log. We're going to grep for employee summary the table that we've been looking at in our log file. What we're going to see is a bunch of SQL statements at the bottom that are the select counts that I was using for our demo here. But farther up, you're going to see copy statements. So copy, employee summary, dot, 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 on segment. These are the data load commands that we're using to load those data files onto our cluster. So the data is in the cluster, but not necessarily on the correct segment. So what we do now is these alter statements. So you see the alter table. HR employee summary set with reorganize equals true. So now the Greenplum server is reorganizing that data across all the segments, regardless if we went smaller to larger or larger to smaller. So each segment will hold the data that it's meant to hold based on the distribution algorithm. So as mentioned earlier, version 1.26.0 is the bare minimum version for both GP Backup and GP Restore to use the new resize cluster option. As you can see here on the help menu, resize cluster, restore a backup taken on a cluster with more or fewer segments than the cluster to which it will be restored. All right, so what happens when we use the resize cluster flag when we don't need to use the resize cluster flag, as in we're restoring to the same number of segments? So I'm just going to take a quick backup here uh, and restore it to the same system. Let's fast forward through this. So now, as you can see, when you do the restore, we'll throw a warning. And it essentially says, this is the same size cluster. We're going to ignore that flag, and we're going to continue. Once when you omit the resize cluster flag, when you actually do need it. Uh, this was my first GP restore example earlier in this demo, so you may have seen this error message already. But GP restore will flag a critical error requiring that the resize cluster option must be used. The resize cluster feature is part of our open source distribution of GP Backup and GP Restore and can be downloaded from our release page at our GitHub repo in the link on the screen above. For our enterprise customers, Greenplum Backup and Restore utilities may be downloaded from the VMware Tanzu network. Thanks for watching.